Okay, here we are today at TSK picking up the what I thought was going to be a black and white sheriff car, but um, there was a little miscommunication uh, with the color of what police cars are in America, I guess. So he hooked me up with a red car. I guess I'm going to be a fireman now. <laughs> Imagine this, you're driving a hypercar, maybe a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, whichever you like. You're flying down a back road or highway at 130 miles per hour. You hear the roar of the engine behind you and it makes you push the pedal a little harder. But as you glance in the rear view mirror, there it is, a Tesla police interceptor. And it's right on your tail, coming up fast, in complete silence. This interceptor can go from zero to 125 miles per hour in just six seconds, slipping into your rear view mirror almost out of nowhere lights flashing it's sleek silent and shockingly fast and it's not slowing down in those six seconds you realize there's no escape and if you're thinking i've still got a chance well not this time this police car will be built to hit speeds up to 180 miles per hour there will be no escape from it in the modern world and i can't wait to take it for a legal spin on the track and really push it because you know someone has to test this powerhouse before it heads to the streets for real police duty Long story short, this car was uh, abandoned. It was completely stripped. First person I thought of was TSK. And I said, man, if, if I get this car to TSK, I know they can get the car back together. And even in the worst condition that it was, it was unbelievable how bad it was. And uh, the rest is history. Starting from the front, the bumper, headlights, fenders, and even the undercarriage panels were all missing. The previous owner took out almost everything he could from the front of the car. The doors were removed either, damaging the hinges. I don't think the cast has been in an accident though. Now, the interior, this part is almost unbelievable. The dashboard was wrecked and the center console was cracked and dismantled. The glass monitor was cracked and since this glass cannot be replaced separately from the display, it required replacing the whole thing because of this single crack. The main screen, gone, wires tiered. The glove box was torn apart and all the wiring in that area was either damaged or missing. Small trim pieces were cracked and out of place. The professional who tried to remove the battery managed to damage it in the process. Not only did he break the main connector that secures the battery, but he also pried off the clips that hold the battery's connectors in place. So putting back the battery was impossible because the clips were completely missing. So our first vision was to build this pretty crazy drawing here it was a black and white sheriff race car and you know i wanted to go crazy since the car was fast and put a roll cage in it and take all the stuff out of it and basically have like one little race seat and nothing else in it and then we came over to tsk talked to them and the direction kind of changed and we said well this is a really nice car this car is worth a lot of money um, and if we get it complete and all the interior back in it'll still be just as fast but it'll also be comfortable and look really good. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that turning a wrecked car into a sports car will be cheaper. After all, with so many parts already missing, it seems like you just need to throw in a sports steering wheel, racing seats, slap on a few decals, and you're all set for record-breaking speed. I've fallen into that trap before. If you remember our Cyber 3 project, it initially started as an electric sports car, and that's where I learned my lesson. Sport is not cheap. When you're deciding between restoring a car to its original condition or transforming it into a high-performance sports car, restoring can cost about a third as much. With a sports build, on the other hand, every single component suddenly comes with a much higher price tag. Plus, by going full sports mode, you're automatically giving up the comfort of daily driving. No more sitting back in a cushy seat, enjoying autopilot, and gliding along in peace. A sports build sacrifices soundproofing, makes the ride harsher and stiffer, all for shaving off mere fractions of a second. So, why sacrifice the comfort of this car if you anyway achieve approximately the same acceleration results? And let's look at another perspective. It's basically the perfect mobile office. There's space for a laptop and everything an officer needs for daily work. Not much time has passed 
and the interceptor is almost ready. This is truly a thousand horsepower interceptor. Since the sheriff's last visit, we've made some big changes up front. As you can see, it's looking more and more like a real police vehicle, which is exactly the point of this project. And now, check out this crucial moment. We're attaching the steering wheel to the police plaid. And it's a real steering wheel, not one of those yokes that you film for TikTok. This is for the driver who will need quick, precise handling, something you can't manage with a half-cut steering wheel. We're getting ready to show this car at SEMA, the biggest show for custom and modified cars, and it's not our first time there. Those who follow our channel know we've displayed different cars there for years. This time, we're pushing to finish this project in time, along with our Tesla Roofless, which is also getting some work before SEMA. But time's running short, especially with everything left to do to make this a fully functional police vehicle. All brand new, everything's amazing. The fitment's perfect, everything's operational, the lights work. We ended up getting factory equipped brakes, which the car never had. All the brake lines were damaged when they uh, tore it apart. And these beautiful 21 inch factory wheels look amazing. Um, as you can see, the car is completely functional. Everything works, doors open amazingly. All new interior. This had stripped interior. All the panels were off. Actually, the doors were removed and never located. So we got new doors put in, uh, new steering wheel, uh, new screen. So the, the main uh, computer inside the car, if you can see, was completely removed and damaged. Uh, the wires, they ended up cutting the wires behind the, the screen. The next step, after TSK got this thing all ready to go, we're, we're set to do at least 180 in this thing. We got to get it over to our friends over at Upfit, get the, the emergency lights put in, get the siren put in. We're going to put a divider in the back, just like you see in every other patrol car. We'll have um, it all set up with the computers, a radio, and we'll be able to pretty much have a complete interceptor. Um, once the car is either painted or wrapped, we'll decide. It, we should be ready to go and get out to the track and hopefully see you guys out there so you can come out and try and race us. The goal with this car is eventually to go 200 miles an hour, 200 plus. So we're gonna be doing some other modifications down the road. We'll probably have to upgrade to ceramic brakes. We'll have to do the performance wheels from Tesla. If not unplugged, might help us up with some really cool wheels and brake package so we'll stay tuned for that what do you guys think should we do some aerodynamics should we add a wing spoiler uh let us know hope to see you at the track soon and this tesla is also getting a push bumper something the sheriff's old tesla didn't have and i'd like to spend a little more time talking about it we spent an entire week working on installing a push bumper, bringing in a specialist known for his precision work. And he managed to install it without drilling a single hole in the bumper. This wasn't our first attempt though. We previously had a push bar on before. And while it was solid, it wasn't exactly a perfect fit. Now, with some expert touches, the setup is way more seamless. We're also reworking the bumper. The previous cuts weren't as clean as we'd like. So we refined the edges and made sure everything fits flawlessly. I haven't seen another police car with a bumper intact like this. No gaps, no cuts. The bumper's entirely in place and the push bar mounts securely through the grill. Then this car is heading to Unplug Performance. They are highly respected and specialize in significant modifications of various types of electric vehicles. They also enhance and equip Tesla police cars, which are used for everyday law enforcement tasks. Here we have a speaker, a little hole to make it louder. Uh, it's called a siren speaker. Then there is a bar. It is basically the same as ours, but it has been improved. This thing has also been finished. It depends on the department. If they want to perform certain maneuvers and so on, they request these things. They also use them very clearly to just wait. This is a specialized K9 unit. They work with dogs, right? How did that turn out? What a toy, can you imagine? You drive around all day in that thing and they even pay you for it. I didn't even expect so many changes here. Everything is done exactly as it is in other police vehicles. There is a door here. If you look at it from an angle, you can see that it has such an overlay and this overlay is plastic. And under the plastic, there is a Kevlar plate. The vehicle is additionally armored with armored front doors. 
meaning you use the door as a shield. We are still working on this. It is not finished yet, but essentially there will be a dog here, a soft pet laid out here. Even though the car is not yet in police colors, it is obvious that this vehicle is either service oriented or belongs to a very specific person who is periodically in a hurry and may run someone over. That is, in any case, people are wary when driving this vehicle. That's the first point. The second, this vehicle feels like an absolutely new car. It smells like a new automobile. Everything is in its place. It has traveled 3,000 miles. So this is it for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed watching. If so, like this video and consider subscribing, not to miss the upcoming coolest EV projects. We will definitely show how the Interceptor looks when it is finished. Stay tuned. Bye.